morning. Good morning. We'll get started in a few minutes. We'll get started in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, it is 1030. So we'll go ahead and get started with today's Fun Friday activity. Um, today we're doing holiday trivia and we'll kind of be doing um, a variety of holidays. We have a little bit of Christmas, um, some Hanukkah and even Kwanzaa. So um, we'll test, test your knowledge on some December holidays and we'll go ahead and get started. So starting out, our first question is what popular Christmas song was actually written for Thanksgiving? And our options are Silver Bells, Jingle Bells, or Carol of the Bells. And we have some Zoom participants today. We'll give them a chance to answer as well as our Facebook crowd. We'll see if any, if you tuned in a few weeks ago um, when we did Thanksgiving trivia, you might know the answer to this one. And we have some different answers on Facebook. Um, somebody said silver bells and another said jingle bells. And the correct answer is jingle bells. So this song was actually written for Thanksgiving and um, a little bit of history on that. I didn't include it in the slide, but um, from our Thanksgiving trivia, we learned that the song was actually written about the sled races that were popular in Boston around the time. And it was sung at a Boston Sunday school program, I think around Thanksgiving. All right, here is our next question. So this one says, who wrote, in quotes, maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store, 
maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. So we're looking for who wrote that. If you know who said it, um, we'll also take that answer. So maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And I see we have some responses on Facebook. And the correct answer is Dr. Seuss and somebody else told us who wrote it or who said it and that would be the Grinch. Okay, this question is, what was the first company that used Santa Claus in advertising? And here are our different options. Um, first is Budweiser, then Coca-Cola, iPhone, or Pepsi. So which one of these companies used Santa Claus in advertising first? They were the first company to do so. Budweiser, Coca-Cola, iPhone, or Pepsi? And we got some answers on Facebook. Some different ones. Somebody said Coca-Cola. Another person said Pepsi. And the correct answer, Coca-Cola. And um, he, Santa Claus first appeared in 1931 and has been kind of a staple of their advertising around the holidays, especially. All right. Do more Americans buy a real or an artificial Christmas tree? So this one we're looking for real or artificial. What do you think? You can also let us know or discuss what um, you prefer. Do you prefer a real or an artificial Christmas tree? Um, you can see behind me, um, this is an artificial tree. So um, I thought I'd make, I thought I'd get a little festive today and have a Christmas tree in the background. I also have my holiday light coffee mug here with me too. So our question is, do more Americans buy a real or artificial Christmas tree? And we'll see if we have some answers on Facebook. Um, somebody said artificial. Um, our Zoom participants, you can feel free to unmute or put in the chat your answer. And our Facebook answers are correct. It is artificial. 82% of Americans prefer an artificial Christmas tree. And somebody on Facebook says they prefer the real because they like the smell, which I could see. Instead, we, we got a candle that um, smells like a Christmas tree instead. So that was our compromise. All right, our next question is, according to the song, 12 Days of Christmas, what did my true love give to me on the eighth day of Christmas? So while you're thinking on that, I, while I was putting together this um, trivia today, in total, we have um, in total the we received 364 gifts um, during this song. So we're looking for what did you what did your true love give to you on the eighth day of Christmas? We'll see if you might have to run through the song in your head to figure this one out. Um, we have some different answers. Somebody says some horns of plane or golden rings. Um, that is not correct. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Eight maids of milking. And um, 
In total, you receive 364 gifts throughout the song. I don't think I can remember all of them off the top of my head. Okay. Our next question is, what does the word Noel mean in Latin? And our different options are birth, manger, or nativity. So what does the word Noel mean in Latin? Somebody on Facebook um, said, um, in reference to the 12 days of Christmas song, receiving 364 gifts, you're one gift short of a full year of gifts, which is true. All right, we're, we'll see if anybody can get this one right. And we already have some answers on Facebook. And the correct answer is birth. So Noel in Latin means birth. And a little, some fun facts about this. So English speakers borrowed the word Noel from French. In French, Noel means Christmas. The word further dates back to the Latin word Natalis. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, meaning birthday or of or relating to birth. And if you saw our trivia question on Facebook yesterday, which was um, Santa Claus is called a lot of different things around the world, but where is he called Pere Noel? Um, this can kind of be a little hint to that. It is in France where he's referred to that or as Papa Noel, which means Father Christmas. So here is another question about Santa Claus. What country was the original St. Nicholas from? And our options are Iceland, Turkey, or Brazil. So um, if you didn't know, Santa Claus is actually based on a real person. Um, and I think it's kind of more like a merger of all like one person plus some different folklore and legends, um, but it dates back quite a ways. So we have some different answers. Somebody said Iceland, another person said Turkey. I should have included the North Pole just says, maybe just to throw you off. Um, and the correct answer is Turkey. So a little fun information about that because we love to play trivia and also learn as well. The Christian bishop, St. Nicholas, was the inspiration behind the jolly man we all know and love. His story began in the 4th century AD in what is now modern-day Turkey. He was famous for his generosity toward children, gift-giving, and for devoting his life to helping the poor. Here's our next question. Three of Santa's reindeer's names begin with the letter D. What are their names? So can you name all three of Santa's reindeers whose name starts, whose names start with the letter D? We'll test your reindeer knowledge now. I'd love to know, um, how reindeer, flying reindeer came into the story of Santa Claus. Um, if, it, if the story is based off of a real person, that would be interesting. Okay, so one person has said Dasher, Dancer, and Dixon. Another answer is Dasher, Dancer, and Donner. Um, Dasher, Donner, and Dancer. And though some people would be correct, um, Dixon is not a reindeer's name. We have Dancer, Dasher, and Donner. Maybe after this, you can test your memory and see if you can name all nine. This one um, surprised, I don't know if it surprised me a little bit, but um, it's kind of shocking to see the number altogether. And our question is, how much money do Americans spend on average on holiday gifts? 
So this is all together the average amount that Americans will spend. So our options are 1,500, 800, or 1,000. So how much money do Americans spend on average on holiday gifts? 1,500, 800, or 1,000? Somebody guessed 1,500. Some might prefer not to know the answer. Um, somebody else went for the lower option, 800. And the correct answer is 1,000. So on average, that is how much we are spending on holiday, holiday gifts for everyone that we're buying gifts for. All right, what are two of the most popular tree toppers? And our options are a snowflake, a bow, a top hat, an angel, or a star. Um, I have none of the above, if you can see. Um, I don't even know what I would call that, just some fancy shape. I actually just learned the name. I wish I could remember it now, what the name of a tree topper is actually called. Is on a Hallmark movie and now I can't remember. So, but there is a name for a tree top. It's not just tree topper, there's a name for it. So what are two of the most popular tree toppers? And we got some different answers. A lot of people going for angel and star. I personally have never seen a tree with a top hat on it, but there was some pretty pictures online star and a bow, another answer. And the correct answer is a star and an angel. All right, our next question. What holiday beverage is known as milk punch? And your options are hot chocolate, eggnog, a chai tea latte, or horchata. Um, which is, I think it's a Mexican drink or possibly other countries in Latin America also. But which holiday beverage is known as milk punch? Hot chocolate, eggnog, chai tea latte, or horchata? I think this one might be kind of easy. but all of these drinks can be made with milk. So maybe it's not so easy. Um, somebody guessed horchata and we have two eggnog guesses. Okay, and our eggnog guessers are correct. Milk punch is all, or milk punch is eggnog. Our next question is about Rockefeller Center. When was the first tree put up at Rockefeller Center? Did anyone watch the tree lighting this year? You can let us know that in the comments as well. I think it'd be really fun to be there in person sometime and see that. So when was the first tree put up at Rockefeller Center. We'll see if we have any guesses. I didn't give any options on this one, so it is complete guess, unless you know it, then it's, then it's just an answer. We'll learn a little bit about it too. Somebody guessed the 1920s, close. And the correct answer is 1931. So to learn about this a little bit, the first Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center 
was erected in 1931 during the depression era construction of Rockefeller Center. When workers decorated a smaller 20 foot tree with strings of cranberries, garlands of paper, and even a few tin cans on Christmas Eve. Two years later in 1933, it became an annual tradition. So I guess um, if you knew when Rockefeller Center was constructed, that would have um, kind of helped. That would have been a, con a little clue for you to figure out when the first tree went up. Um, so the first tree went up in 1931 and it didn't become an annual tradition until 1933. Our next question is about Frosty the Snowman. What article of clothing makes Frosty come to life? Is it a top hat, a scarf, or his button nose? So if you remember from the movie Frosty the Snowman. Um, Frosty is just a snowman, um, an inanimate snowman, until a piece of clothing is put onto him and then he comes to life. What article of clothing was it? And yep. Our Facebook crowd is on top of it. It is a top hat. That is what makes Frosty come to life. All right, here is another question about reindeer. How many reindeer drive Santa Claus's sleigh, including Rudolph? So all together, how many reindeer Santa's sleigh. Might have to do count them off in your head. Think of their names. <clears throat> well, we got some quick answers. So somebody said nine, another person said nine. So if it's plus Rudolph, I'll give you a hint. It has to be an odd number because the reindeer go two by two with Rudolph at the front. And the correct answer is nine. So our Facebook crowd is on it again um, with nine. All right, now we're gonna move into a few questions about Hanukkah um, and we'll test your knowledge about that holiday. So how many days does Hanukkah last? And our options are 10, seven, or eight. So how many days does Hanukkah last? Somebody said eight, seven. Another person said eight. Anybody think it's 10? Um, and yes, the correct answer is eight. Hanukkah lasts eight days. And the significance behind this, um, the festival of Hanukkah celebrates the Jew, Jews' victory over a tyrant king and the rededication of, a, of the temple in Jerusalem. As the story goes, a small quantity of oil to light the temple's menorah miracu miraculously lasted eight days. So there was only enough oil to light um, the menorah for, I think it was one day, and then it miraculously lasted eight days. And so, that is why the festival of Hanukkah um, lasts eight days. Here is another question about Hanukkah. This small four-sided spinning top with a Hebrew letter on each side is used in a children's game traditionally played during Hanukkah. What is this item called? If 
anybody knows how to play this game, um, you can let us know that as well. But we're looking for the name of this small four-sided spinning top. See if anybody on Facebook or our Zoom participants can get this correct. And we have a few correct answers. And yes, it is a dreidel. All right, our next question is a true or false about Kwanzaa. So true or false, Kwanzaa is a religious holiday. True or false, Kwanzaa is a religious holiday. Somebody said false. Another person said true. I think it's um, it's been interesting learning about some of these holidays that I don't celebrate um, and some different misconceptions as well, because um, I really didn't know what Kwanzaa was, but um, it is not a religious holiday. And um, somebody asked on Facebook if it was a cultural holiday, and that is correct. Kwanzaa is a seven day festival honoring and celebrating African heritage in African American culture. Each of, the, each of the days are dedicated to the seven principles of unity, seven principles of unity, self-determination, collective responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Despite some common misconceptions, Kwanzaa is neither political nor religious in nature, and it is not a substitute for Christmas. So it is just a cultural holiday that happens to kind of fall in December um, along with these other two religious holidays of Hanukkah and Christmas, um, which also doesn't have to be religious, but um, yeah, so we're learning a little bit today too. I know I am. All right, the word Kwanzaa comes from which language? And your options are Somali, Swahili, or Igbo? So these are all African languages and we're looking for which one the word Kwanzaa comes from. We got some quick answers. We'll give everybody a chance to put their guesses in. And if you guessed, Swahili, you would be correct. So Kwanzaa is a Swahili word that means first, and it signifies the first fruits of the harvest. Um, that is what the word means or represents. All right, our next question. What gifts did the three kings bring to baby Jesus? So we got three presents here. We'll see if anybody can tell us what would be in each of these presents from the three kings. Um, if no, no extra points for spelling. Um, I spelled them right on this, but I can tell you that when I was putting the answers in, I definitely did not spell these right. So we got some different answers. Okay. Somebody said frankincense, myrrh, and blank. Um, we got a gold incense and myrrh. 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh, or frankincense and myrrh? And the correct answers are gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So I think um, of our Facebook crowd, only one person got all three correct. Our next question is a true or false. So true or false, candy canes are shaped like shepherd's canes to remind of the shepherds who were first to worship the newborn baby Jesus. True or false? So the candy canes are shaped like shepherd's canes to remind of the shepherds who were the first to worship the newborn baby Jesus. Or are they just ironically shaped that way so that they can hang better on Christmas trees? We got some answers that say true, that they were purposely shaped like shepherd's canes. Somebody else says false. And the correct answer, true. And of course, we're gonna learn a little bit about this. So the first candy cane was created in 1670 by a choir master in Germany. They were made, they were made to be a gift to the children who attended a Christmas nativity pageant. Sticking with the nativity theme, the choir master decided to bend the candy cane sticks to resemble the shape of a shepherd's crook. Soon these candy canes became a tradition in the church and eventually spread across Europe. So this choir master must have been um, making the candy canes himself because I don't think he could just take a candy stick and bend it. But the, um, if you have some free time, there's a lot of history behind um, all of these holidays and um, I think you could take a whole day just going through all of it and reading about where different traditions come from and how different traditions have blended together to be what they are today. Um, I know I've learned a lot and I think I could still keep learning more. Um, this, our next question kind of falls into that category. Um, it's a true or false, the X in Xmas has no meaning. So true or false, the X in Xmas has no meaning. Is it just an X or does it mean something? And um, if, you if you think it's true, what do you think the X means? Or does it just not mean anything? All right, and the correct answer is false. So the X in Xmas does have a meaning. The X in Xmas is not really an X at all. It's Chi, the Greek letter at the start of the word Christ or Christos. Um, this abbreviation dates back to 1021. So this is really just kind of a brief history of how Christmas got shortened to Xmas. Um, there's actually quite a history of X being used um, to replace the word Christ, just to shorten it. So if you want to know more about that, um, there's a lot to read. It dates back to 1021. So um, yeah, there's definitely more than just this little part I use, but um, this would be a fun, fun, some fun information to share um, at your holiday party coming up that the X in Xmas actually does have a meaning. And that is all for our fun Friday today. As always, we're um, brought to you by COVID Recovery Iowa, and we're here every weekday at 1030 for a different fun activity. On Mondays, we have Mindful Monday um, with different discussions about safety, aging, health, nutrition, and also some discussions with community partners as well. On Tuesdays, we have our live music with Carlene. On Wednesdays, we do some um, legacy writing, um, which is 
our last, I encourage you to go back and la- watch this Wednesday's. It was super fun, um, kind of talking about different events in history, where you were, what you remember, um, how it affected you. On Thursday, we have Travel Thursday. And recently we've been to the North Pole um, through video and presentations. And on Friday, we always have um, different fun trivia, guess who named that tune. And next week we'll have some Christmas movie trivia, which I'm really looking forward to. And um, last week we did a Christmas song trivia or Christmas song name that tune. So you can go back and watch all of these videos. And as always, um, you if you're looking for someone to talk to or help connection, help connect you to other resources, you can reach our virtual outreach counselors via the Iowa Concern Hotline um, or the Iowa Warm Line. Both of those lines operate 24 seven. We also have other language services available via our Spanish line and on our website, www.covidrecoveryiowa.org. So thank you all for joining and we'll see you next week.